Hello, everybody. So we're going to continue with Chapter 8. We're on Lesson 8.3 today. Unit Fractions of a Whole. And we are on page 329 of the third grade textbook. The essential question that you should be able to answer by the end of the lesson is, what do the top and bottom numbers of a fraction tell? Okay. So a fraction is a number that names part of a whole or part of a group. In a fraction, the top number tells how many equal parts are being counted. The bottom number tells how many equal parts are in the whole or in the group. So in this fraction here, there are six parts that make up the whole. The numerator means we're counting one of those equal parts. A unit fraction names one equal part of a whole. It has one as its top number. So one sixth is a unit fraction. So let's look at the unlock the problem. Luke's family picked strawberries. They put the washed strawberries in one part of a fruit platter. The platter had six equal parts. What fraction of the fruit platter had strawberries? All right, so we know it has six equal parts, and one part is going to be strawberries. So if we draw a circle and we divide it into six sections, that would represent the fruit platter. Now they're only going to have strawberries in one of the six sections or parts. So the strawberries represent one sixth of the fruit platter. And as it says here, we read that as one sixth and we write it as one over six. So again, the six tells us how many total parts there are in the whole. And the top number tells us we're counting one of those six pieces. So now use a fraction to find a whole. This shape, a square, is one fourth of the whole. So this square is a unit fraction of one-fourth. So that tells me that the bottom number means there are four equal parts in the whole. The, numer the top number is telling me that we're counting one. Each one of these squares is e equal to one-fourth of the whole. So one way we could do it is to have just four squares in a, in a row or in a line. It could look like a square with four squares inside. It could look like this. So the bottom line is, is that it has to have four parts, four equal parts. All right, so try this. Look again at the examples on the bottom of page 329 and draw two other pictures of how the whole might look. Okay, so again, we're looking at each part being one-fourth. So we have to come up with another drawing that doesn't look like one of these, but that has four squares. What could it look like? What could their, the whole look like? Well, they could have been diagonal. Okay, this just has four squares. Uh, maybe it was just vertical. I don't know. Just any any four squares together would make that whole. Okay. So you come up with two. All right, now let's go ahead and practice. What fraction names the shaded part? So we just want to know what one of these rectangles is. 
Well, to figure out the bottom, we know that there are one, two, three equal parts. So the, the, the bottom number is three. The shaded part is one. So we call that one third. Number two. Write the number of equal parts in the whole, then write the fraction that names the shaded part. All right, so how many equal parts are in number two? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six equal parts. This part right here is a unit fraction of the whole, and it's one sixth. Number three, how many equal parts? Three. Six, eight. Eight equal parts. And how many are shaded? One. So again, that's the unit fraction. Each rectangle in that hole is one eighth. Number four, there are three triangles. One of them is shaded. So one third. Okay, then you're noticing or should notice that the numerator, uh, the numerator is what the top number is called. It's, a, it's the special math name for it. Um, so the top number tells me that we're using one of the six pieces. And you notice that they're all one. So a fraction that has one as the top number is a unit fraction. All right, number five, there are two equal parts. And the shaded part is one half of that whole. Okay, the next one, I see four equal parts. And the shaded part is one fourth. Number seven, I see four on each side two, four, six, eight, eight equal parts. So every triangle is one eighth. Okay, not very, not very difficult at all, right? All right, number eight. Write the number of equal parts in the whole, then write the fraction that names the shaded part. Okay, well, that's what we've been doing, right? So I see one, two, three, four equal parts. And the shaded triangle and it could be any of those, is one fourth. Every triangle in the whole is one fourth. Okay, in the next drawing, we have two equal parts. Each triangle is half of the whole. In number 10, one, two, three equal parts. And each section is one third of the drawing. Number 11, I see four on this side, and I see four on that side, so that's eight equal parts, and each triangle is one eighth. Number 12, I see three triangles on the top, three triangles on the bottom, for six equal parts. Each individual triangle in the whole is one sixth. All right, how many equal parts are in this drawing? There's eight equal parts. Okay. And each section of the drawing is one eighth. Okay, so these these squares are the same size, right? And there's multiple ways I can divide a square into four equal parts. Diagonally, I can do it. I can do it like they've done it here. I could draw vertical, vertical and horizontal lines. 
to have four parts. It just has to be um, equal parts. All right, number 14. All right, well, if the unit fraction is this shape, I should be able to complete the whole. The other half looks exactly like that. Okay, so as close as possible. Complete the drawing. One third. So this square is one third of the whole. So it doesn't tell you which direction to go. So just get as close to the square as you can. Okay, so that would be one third. Okay, you might have it go straight up, you might have it go diagonally, you might have two here and one down. Just, you got to have three parts, right? All right, number 16, one-sixth. So this rectangle is one-sixth of the whole. So that means we're going we're gonna to need six of these pieces. That's two, three, four, five, Six. And 17, one fourth. So how many of these pieces do we have? We have four. So basically we're making a circle. There's two, three, four. Maybe your drawing looks better, Mike. One fourth. All right, number 18. Use the pictures for 18 and 19. All right, so the missing parts of the pictures show what Kylie and Dan ate for lunch. Okay, so the missing parts are, it's they've eaten them. What fraction of the pizza did Dylan eat? All right, so this part here is what was eaten. Well, remember that the bottom number tells me how many total pieces there were in the whole. So there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There were eight pieces before he ate anything. He ate one slice. So he ate one eighth. What fraction of the apple did Kylie eat? Write the fraction in numbers and in words. All right, so she wrote, she's, I'm missing part of it right here, right? I'm missing the mirror side of it. So he ate half. So as a fraction, as in words, we write one half. Number 20. Diego drew lines to divide the square into six pieces as shown. Then he shaded part of the square. Diego says he shaded one-sixth of the square. Is he correct? Explain how you know. All right. So he shaded one out of six parts. But are they six equal parts? No. So if they're not equal parts, he can't say he shaded one-sixth. So no. There are not equal parts. In other words, if I took six of these, he's saying that this is one-sixth. I wouldn't be able to have enough to fill this whole square. Okay, These middle sections are not one-sixth. Mm, they're probably Two sixths, maybe even three sixths. I think you can probably get two of these in there, so I think it's two sixths. Well, it's not two sixths, it would be one, two, three, four, eighths. I think this should have been eighths. All right, 21. Riley and Chad each have a granola bar broken into pieces. They each eat one piece or one fourth of the granola bar. 
All right, so Riley and Chad, so that's two people. They each eat one fourth. How many more pieces do they need to finish both granola bars? Draw a picture to justify your answer. Okay, so they have two granola bars. And they ate one fourth. So. All right, something like that, right? And um, I'll go ahead and shade the part that was eaten. All right, so Riley ate one fourth of the granola bar. Chad. Also ate one fourth. I'll say he is. So that wasn't the question, though. It didn't ask how many they've eaten. It wants to know how many more pieces do they need to eat to finish both granola bars. Well, Riley needs to eat three. Chad needs to eat three. So six more pieces. Right, 22. What fraction names the shaded part? Explain how you know how to write the fraction. All right, so there are three parts. One of them is shaded, so each smaller rectangle is one third. There are Three equal parts. So that is the bottom number. There is one part shaded. So that is the top number. So again, the bottom number of a fraction is how many total pieces are in the whole. In this case, there are three equal parts. And one part is shaded, so that's the top number. That's the number being counted. I mean, that's the part being counted, so one third. All right, so that's it for um, unit fractions. Our next lesson will continue with fractions of a whole. So until then, may the numbers always be in your favor.